Hello, welcome to Gemini e Frick, the high precision friction drive mount. If you have already purchased yours, thank you for your trust. If not, you still do have some time to do so. Let's have a look at the features of this uh, novel friction drive mount. It features a double stage poor friction drive without any uh, gears, which uh, provides exceptional tracking precision and stability. As you can see, it has a lightweight design which uh, allows to keep the mount's own weight down to 18 kilos while its payload is around 30 kilos. It has a traditional equatorial base with the locking screws uh, that uh, allow fixing the elevation once you have adjusted with the screw which is found here. The azimut is adjusted with these two screws and the azimut pin has a wide range of uh, possible position that allows using practically any tripod. Furthermore, the central uh, bushing is exchangeable, which means that you can uh, use any tripod thread that you have available. The axis can be locked with these small triangles. The size is limited to limit uh, the locking force. It's about one turn between locked and open position. The counterweight shaft rotates with the declination axis, which allows you to mount a second small telescope uh, in parallel with the main telescope. Uh, the shafts are bored for cable pass through. I have routed for demonstration a USB 3 cable through from right the from the base to the declination platform. You have uh, an adapter for your Polar Finder CCD. The mount can be separated in two pieces for easy transport and storage. The declination head it locks with the four screws and the equatorial base. The mount can be grabbed in practically any position. There are no sensible parts. You can grab it here or here or anywhere else. You can use any stepper driver to drive this mount. Here I have put on a Pulsar 2, which is uh, all product, but you can use an arm step, a Tina straw, or anything else that you can think of. First, you put the equatorial head on the tripod. Separate the lips of the azimut pin adapter so that it fits on the pin, which must face to nose. When you have positioned it over the screw, lock it. Please note that uh, the ovals of the elevation lock screws have a certain range. Once you have separated the range, you have to remove them and position in another hole, threaded hole that is below. Lock the pipe ascension axis and now we can put on the declination head. You will note the positioning pins and the relative holes here and there is no preferred side. It can be mounted like this or like this. Rotate the declination shaft so that this slot allows you to insert the hexagonal key into the locking bolt. And lock it a few turns, then pass to the next one. Do not lock completely. Then rotate the declination axis 180 degrees to access the other four screws. And now you can lock them completely. We are ready now. Release the right extension axis and insert the counterweight shaft. You can lock it with the key like this. When the declination head with the Losmendi rail is on the western side of the pier, the locks must uh, point upwards to avoid interference because otherwise during the meridian flip they could hit the right ascension gear cover here. So remember to mount it correctly.
there are indications uh, below this cover. To balance the telescope, hold the right ascension shaft and check for any imbalance. Now it's balanced. And then you can balance the right ascension. Please note that in positions other than horizon top, the declination motor and the SSH drive system can create some imbalance. But this is not uh, anything to worry about. Actually, if you are a perfectionist, you can mount an off-axis counterweight here that balances the effect of the declination motor.